Not exactly the scariest game for Halloween, but it does have a lot to show. Detention is a 2017 indie horror game developed by Red Candle Games and published by Red Candle Games, Coconut Island Games, and AGM Playism. It takes place in a fictional universe with 1960s Taiwan under martial law. You play as a student named Wei Chung Ting who falls asleep during one of his classes. When he wakes up, his classmates and teachers are all gone because apparently there's a typhoon and they all went home without him. Now that's a pretty unrealistic scenario. Did everyone just panic and run home leaving that poor boy on his desk? Now what I do find believable is his deep sleep. Heck, I'd probably be sleeping like a baby even if the entire world got nuked. Wei decides to look around the campus and go outside. A typical horror game by now would have been like, Hey, this door is locked. Search for a way out of school by going to every single room. But nope. Wei explores around until he discovers this dead-looking girl named Fang Rei Shin sitting in the middle of the auditorium stage. Now, I don't find the game that scary, but some scenes, just like this shot, was just plain creepy. The camera was just slowly zooming into Rei, and I felt like she was just gonna jump out and, you know, lash out at the screen. But nope. Wei approaches her and says, who are you? Are you dead? I think I read something about how the color palette of the characters is grayscale in order to resemble old photos from this era. But good lord, she looks like a corpse. Anyway, this is just one of the instances where detention subverts my expectations of an indie horror game. The game's hypnosis in the store page was misleading. I expected Wei and Rei to split up after they met, but they end up sticking together. I also expected Wei to be the protagonist for the entire game, but nope again. You take control of Rei once Wei disappears after looking for something, and you eventually find his dead body hanging upside down, so yeah. The art direction wasn't my style at first, but I grew to like it more and more as I progressed through the game. It would go from dark and creepy to just plain surreal. I didn't find the enemies in the game too scary. Even the ghost illustrations that serve as a guide on what to do when you encounter one were actually kind of cute. They look like something out of a children's folklore book. There would be some spirits that were nerve-wracking the first time I saw them, but other than that, they weren't a big threat. An early enemy encountered in-game is a schoolgirl that looks kind of like Rei if she was covered in shadows. Despite how bland that ghost was, it put me on edge because oh my god, it sounded freaky. All you need to do to get past that ghost is to hold your breath. But ugh, I felt paranoid just running down the same hallway with that thing. I swear, the ghost doesn't even need to do anything to me. I'd probably die from a heart attack just listening to it. Which brings me to the sound design. I don't really remember any particular soundtrack from the game, like actual background music, but the ambience and the general sound effects were just so good. Most of the edginess and paranoia I felt was just because of that. But anyway, the first hour or so of detention consists of the usual stuff. You pick up items, grab notes, avoid enemies, and solve puzzles. But after that, the ghosts completely disappear and the game becomes more linear, focusing on story. It's not bad at all, ditching the whole survival horror aspect of the game, because the symbolism and storytelling is definitely something that'll stick to you for a long time. I went from feeling anxious to being intrigued with what the game was trying to convey. A lot of the imagery that followed later in the game made me feel sympathetic when I thought about what the characters were going through. It also gave me awareness of what white terror was. For those who don't know, it was a period in Taiwan where anyone who had criticized the government or read books that weren't approved by the state could be imprisoned or murdered. So seeing it unfold in the game got me interested in what it was like back then. But I'm not going too deep into politics and history for this video. Overall, I think the tension is something that horror game or indie game fans in general should play. The major change in gameplay halfway through might be a bit jarring, but the whole thing's only about three to four hours long. Besides, it uses that time so much more than other games with twice as much playtime, in ways that are way too spoilerish to talk about. Happy Halloween, you guys. Let me know what you thought about detention.